Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool, and I'm always on the prowl for unique lighting solutions. And this is the Vast Light Minima Bow. This is essentially the smallest commercially available sort of what we're loosely calling laser lights or LEPs. That's laser excited phosphor. It's different than an LED. Now it has an output just like a flashlight except that is a very narrow beam. But unlike a laser you can actually use this to see things. Uh, lasers are good for indicating things and directional pointing but um, you really you couldn't walk through a forest with a, a laser beam as your lighting solution. This is, is a very long reach flash flashlight. Now, this particular one is probably the smallest commercially available version of one of these LEPs, and this vast light has a candela of over 140,000. Now, what that means is it reaches out to over 700 meters without a whole lot of work. Um, generally, what the problem is with these is they can reach so far, but We've dirtied up the air, or maybe it's got a lot of moisture or dust in it, and that's what eats up a lot of the light. But I took it out and used it, so look, check this out. This is firing out about three to 400 meters, depending. Now, obviously, at that distance, it's going to be very difficult to see things because it's a small area, it's dark, your eyes have to adjust to this, you know, real bright spot versus, a, you know, the, the blackness that surrounds it. But... There is a cool application. Let me get to it. But first of all, take a closer look at it. We've got a little tiny thing, pocket clip, deep carry. Uh, it, its manual of arms basically is a twisting tip, or twisting head on this. And it has two speeds. It's got a low, technically it's 50 lumens, and a high is 280 lumens. But the candela is what's important. So um, on the low, you're getting about 24,000 candela and about 140,650 candela on the uh, on the upper end. And you can do a couple of twists and it'll turn on a strobe. Now, this does have a small battery. Let's take a closer look at that. This is an 850 milliamp, as you can see the number there, a 16340 with USB-C charging on board. A lot of these don't use an external charger, both that make it's it keeps things simple, but also sometimes people drop in other types of batteries and then you'd have access to a charging port, which could cause a problem. Excellent build quality, beautiful aluminum. Now, what's going on is you've got a tremendous reach with a very narrow beam. So what can you do with that? Well, it's generally dark when you're using something like this, unless you're signaling, which is also a great use for this. I mean, being able, you could point it and miles away people could see something. Uh, so there is that, and that's where this tiny form factor comes in. The runtime, scary short. On full blast, fresh battery, you're going to get about 70 seconds of the full-blown um, 140,000 candela. And then it's going to throttle down to the lower setting um, of about 24,000 candela, which has a, a range. You can reach out about 300 meters with that, so still nothing to sneeze at. Um, and that, once it's throttled down, you're going to get a little over an hour of run time as it, as it eats through that battery. But that's what you're paying for is the small form factor. You have it when you want it. So what do I use it for? Well... I played around in the dark trying to uh, see, you know, just how easily I could use it if I'm waving it around, whether or not I can see. But what it turns out is a really good use is just hold it up next to your binoculars, just like that. And then when you are uh, viewing at night, you can literally move this around and line up the dot with what you're seeing. It's very easy to do. And you can use it with all kinds of different binoculars. You can set it in different places. If you were thinking about using this um, you know, more permanently, you can certainly attach it maybe even with a rubber band or a piece of inner tube or something or build something a little more effective. In this case, um, what I've done is I've got a little uh, Leupold spotting scope here, and I just took the tripod mount and added some small rig components. I have a bunch of these for all kinds of different photography applications, but I can literally just drop this thing in right there, crank it down, and now I have a nighttime spotting scope for viewing great distances. And when you put this thing out there, you really, you can see things 
at night uh, that are pretty shocking. Um, you know, I do it more with wildlife, but if I he hear or see something or I can get a bead on it with this, or even start with a larger light and then illuminate it uh, more directly with this. You know, like you might see some some motion out there, but you can't really resolve it with a standard flashlight. Throw this thing on and there you go. So there's an option. Um, I can obviously pull all of this apart and attach this literally to about anything. And I tried it with some others like phone adapters and things like that. And I don't really have uh, something that goes down to this size, but I could easily machine something or build a little um, holder for it that then allows me to leverage different kinds of like phone clamps and stuff like that. But it's so easy. I could actually use it with, you know, bridge binoculars as well. I find underneath is better if there's enough room. It depends on the, the span between your eyeballs. Um, but with these little binoculars, these are 8x20s, these little Leicas. I've also got the 10x20, just a little longer. But dropping that thing in there and then just being able to hold it and view. Um, and because it's pretty small, you know, you don't have to uh, invest a lot of space and weight into carrying something that might have a very narrow use. I'm not saying it's not an important use, it's just a narrower use compared to a traditional flashlight. It does have a glow-in-the-dark ring, um, so you can actually find this thing or see it um, uh, once it's been illuminated. Simple design. You don't want to look into it when you turn it on. This is what the beam looks like um, on a desk. That's low, I think. There's high low, high, and then strobe. Very easy to operate, very simple, very solid. Um, not inexpensive, but again, we're reaching out into some kind of boutique lighting solutions. And if you're throwing it in with your you know, quality binoculars, you're really getting a whole nother level of uh, potential viewing. Um, and you can run it on that that with binoculars, you can run it on that lower setting, especially if you're, say, under 300 meters, um, which is pretty common viewing, and get plenty of runtime, even though it's a tiny little tool here. So there it is. I'd like you to, uh, uh, you know, check it out if this is the kind of thing you're interested in, because there's a lot of other information about these, about uses for them, about how they work. Uh, it's just a fascinating direction. And uh, my guess is that things like this are going to probably wind up in the uh, overlanding space because when you are reaching out several hundred yards, you know, or meters, um, the beam does spread a little bit, obviously. And when it does, you're talking about lighting up something that might be equivalent to a lane on a road at a great distance so you could actually, you know, scout the area if you're driving at night. Kind of a neat use for a small tool. But anyway, there it is. Vast Light Minima Bow. And with that, Doc out.